Hello everyone and welcome to a video presentation on the 11 stylized facts on financial time series. So this presentation is heavily based on a research paper by Professor Rama Khan, who is a professor of mathematics at Oxford. It's in fact one of his most highly cited papers, so I definitely think it's worth a discussion and a read over. So the presentation will be divided up as follows. Um, I'll first start by giving some brief comments on the data that we're looking at, which is time series. And then I'll discuss the meaning of stylized facts. And then I'll pre present the 11 stylized facts about asset returns as they are mentioned in Rama's paper. And to end the presentation, I'll end with my conclusion and references. So let's uh, make some brief comments about the data that we're looking at. So it's of course financial data and it is uh, time series data. And definition goes something like this. We're given a time scale delta T, which could be seconds to a month. And we define a variable called the log return uh, at the scale delta T, which is given as follows. RT of delta T is equal to X, T plus T minus X of T. And this variable X is the logarithm of a variable S of T, where S of T is the price of some financial asset. So this could be a stock, um, an exchange rate, or a market index. And there are some key points that I would like to briefly mention uh, about this log return variable that we have defined. So if you look at the academic literature, and there's often a, an assumption that is made uh, on the, the log returns. And that is that they're IID or independent and identically distributed and take values from a normal distribution with some mean mu and variance sigma squared. Uh, they're also often assumed to be stationary, and in particular, it's assumed that their mean and variance is constant, or in other words, that the mean and variance uh, doesn't change as you're looking at data points uh, in this time series. So with any assumption, uh, one of course needs to be very careful, uh, especially when you're looking at uh, real world data, uh, does this assumption hold? And Actually, a big theme in Roma's paper is that this, of course, doesn't. Uh, a lot of the data that is looked at is actually non-Gaussian in character. So that this assumption could actually be very a very poor assumption uh, to make. Uh, this non-Gaussian character uh, can be measured by the skewness and kurtosis. Uh, which characterizes the deviation from a Gaussian distribution. There's also the topic of finite sample properties of estimators. And in particular, the sample mean and variance for financial data, uh, which you use if you have, say, a sample of size n, uh, might not converge to the theoretical value of the distribution that you're thinking of or using. Um, there's also the topic of ergodicity, um, and in particular, does the time average of some quantity that you're looking at converge to the actual expectation value? Uh, this is a topic that uh, has a lot of technicality to it and maybe could be a future um, topic for a video, but at least here I'm not going to get into it, but I'll just mention it out of interest and refer you to Rama's paper if you wanted to know more. So I've touched very briefly on the data that we're looking at. It's a form of, uh, it's an example of a time series. And if you wanted to know more, uh, I encourage you to look at the book, Analysis of Financial Time Series by Tsei. So we're looking at these log returns. They're the type of data uh, that we're dealing with. And we want to try and understand, is there, uh, common properties and themes that one could see across a many uh, range, many different ranges or varieties of financial um, uh, data. And this is where the topic of stylized facts come in. So there are statistical properties common to a wide range of instruments, markets, and time periods. They're especially seen through the availability of large data sets 
and the availability of computing power um, that we have today, where one can do more uh, intensive analysis. Uh, these statements are qualitative in nature, and one should keep in mind that because they're qualitative, there is some precision being lost in the statements. However, it turns out that having so many qualitative statements actually leads to very strong constraints on the types of models that you want to use to model the financial data. So let me very quickly discuss or mention the 11 stylized facts about asset returns as they're mentioned in Roma's paper. And we start with point one, which is the absence of autocorrelations. So linear autocorrelations of asset returns are often insignificant. Um, except when one is considering very small time scales, so at the scale of about 20 minutes. And on the scale, one has to consider microstructure effects, uh, well, which come into play. Uh, point number two is heavy tails. So the unconditional distribution of returns display a power law or Pareto like tail. And one can use something called the tail index, which in this case is finite, higher than two and less than five for most data sets studied. Uh, point number three is gain loss asymmetry. So one observes large drawdowns in stock prices and stock index values, but not equally large upward movements. Uh, point number four is aggregational gaussianity which is when one increases the time scale delta t over which returns are calculated, their distributions actually start to resemble a normal distribution. So in particular, the shape of the distribution is not the same at different scales. Um, so this is important to keep in mind. Uh, point number five is intermittency. Returns display at any time scale a high degree of variability. Uh, and this uh, high degree of variability is quantified by the presence of irregular bursts in time series of a, of a wide variety of volatility estimators. So point number six is volatility clustering. Different measures of volatility display a positive autocorrelation over several days. And this quantifies the fact that high volatility events tend to cluster in time. Point number seven is conditional heavy tails. So one can correct the returns for volatility, for volatility clustering using, for example, Gartz type models. Um, the residual time series, despite this, still exhibit heavy tails. However, these tails are less heavy than in the unconditional distribution of returns. The point number eight, we have slow decay of autocorrelation in absolute terms. So the autocorrelation function of absolute returns decays slowly as a function of the time lag. And this is roughly as a power law with exponent beta that takes values in the interval point, uh, point 0.2 to point 0.4. And this is sometimes interpreted as a sign of long range dependence. Point nine is the leverage effect where most measures of volatility of an asset are negatively correlated with the returns of that asset. Point 10 is volume volatility correlation, where trading volume is correlated with all measures of volatility. And point 11 is asymmetry in time scales. So this is where coarse-grained measures of volatility predict fine scale volatility better than the other way around. So this was the last point about stylized facts, which were discussed in Roma's paper. Uh, I would encourage you to go and uh, take a look at the paper if you're interested, where uh, Roma goes into much more detail than I have discussed here in this presentation. So now I'll end with my conclusion. Uh, I briefly gave a discussion on the financial data that we're looking at, which is first time series uh, for asset returns. And then I gave a brief meaning on what are the stylized facts. So the stylized facts were common statistical properties um, that were qualitative in nature that were common across many different financial instruments. Um, then finally, I listed the 11 stylized facts about asset returns as they were presented in Rama's paper. Uh, so these are my references that I have used 
Um, they will also be in the video description uh, in case you are interested in reading more. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you for your time. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see other content, um, especially related uh, to technical topics on quant finances, um, I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Uh, thank you very much.